All right, this will be quiz number three for the abdominal cavity. Uh, so again, as you're going through, pause if you need more time to answer the questions. And then once we're done asking all the questions, I'll let you know. You can pause and then we'll come back for the answers. All right, let's start. Number one. Number one, I just want you to identify what this is right here. That's number one. Nice easy one. Number two. All right, we're gonna open up the abdomen here. We're gonna open up here. Just bring this down, right? So we're gonna grab this here and we're gonna reflect it. And I want you to tell me right here what part of the intestines did we just uncover right here? That's number two. Number three. So in this, we've, we've taken this and we've reflected it, right? Now we're gonna take all of this stuff here and we're gonna move it over towards the right side of the body, right? So we're gonna grab this stuff. We're gonna bring this up over here like that. And right here, let me just grab a probe. Right here, we can see this part of the intestines right here that are emerging from underneath of this. I wanna know what is that part of the intestines called just as it emerges from underneath this area here, right there. That was number three. All right, number four is gonna have two parts. So we're gonna put this stuff back for a second. Here, we're gonna put this back down. All right, I'm just gonna kinda of just partially close up the abdominal cavity here. So I wanna know is once we open up the abdominal cavity like this, I want you to tell me what is the name of this cavity that we can get to right here? That's the first part. Second part is if I take this and I reflect this back up and I bring this stuff over kind of like this again, right? And if I'm pushing down here, right, against this, what is the name of the cavity that is under here? So I wanna know what is the name of the cavity that all this stuff is located in? That's the first part. Second part is, is what is, what are we separated from here? What is the name of the cavity that's behind this area here, underneath of this stuff over here, the part that we cannot get to? That's 4A and 4B. Number five, we're gonna take all this stuff and move it back where it's supposed to be like this, okay? And we're gonna trace this part over, over, over until we get right here. So at this part here, we got this thing ending. We got this part beginning, right? We got those coming together. We're gonna take this, flip it over, right? Like this. And I want you to tell me what this is called right here that hangs off the junction between the end of this and the beginning of this. Name that right there. That's number five. Number six. So we're gonna take all this stuff and we're just gonna lift it up a little bit this way, kind of get it up out of the way. And right here, if we kind of look down this way, I want you to tell me what am I pushing against? Sorry, there we go. What are we pushing against right here? All right, so what am I pushing against right there? And we can even grab this and lift it up a little bit, right? If we grab this, you can see that I can kind of lift it a little bit and I'll let it go. We can squish it back down. I want to know what is that? right there. That's number six. Uh, number seven is we're going to move this stuff back down. So put this back. We're going to bring this back like that. We're going to close back up the abdominal cavity here, All right? Like this. And just get this little part there we go it's already covered up good like that and we'll bring this part up here okay so what we're going to do is we're going to open up 
this here. So we uncover that muscle and we're also gonna open it up so we can see the bottom part of the muscle there. So there's this muscle kind of going up and down right here. Now, if I lift up right here, I want you to identify what this little muscle is called right here, this one that we're moving right there. So that it's kind of oriented this way. If we're on this side, it would be oriented this way, right? So again, identify that little muscle right there. That was number seven. Number eight, there's gonna be two parts. So I have like an 8A and an 8B, right? So we'll take the abdominal wall. We're gonna get this out of the way again, like that. We're gonna retake this and we're gonna reflect it up like this. We're gonna take all this stuff and get it over towards me over here. All right, and we're gonna uncover right here, kind of like that. All right, and in this area, here we got this part of the intestines, which is going down this way here. And then you can see we have a direction change. So we stop going down and we start coming medially. And I wanna know what this whole part of the intestines is called here. All right, that's the first part. Second part is what is leading down to it right here. So part A is this part of the intestines here. Part B is this part of the intestines right there. And again, we can go in down this way and then we're turning that way. So part A here, part B there. All right, that was 8A and 8B. Then for number nine, so we're gonna move 8A up out of the way here, right? We're gonna look down in here. Now for nine, there's gonna be uh, three parts here. So we're gonna kind of have A, B, C, 9A, 9B, 9C. Down here, I want you to identify this structure that I'm holding up right here, okay? That's gonna be 9A. Then if we follow that over, let me just get this right there, follow it over towards me, grab this here that. So I'm holding up 9A, this part that I'm holding up here. 9B is, oh, just lost it. Sorry. Let's get that. There we go. 9B is this part right here. And then 9C is to tell me what connects 9A and 9B right along here. So again, 9A, 9B, and then 9C is what connects those two things right along there. All right, that's all question nine. All right, so the next couple are gonna be off the body. So I'm gonna demonstrate a, a movement. And you're gonna name it. All right, so number 10. Okay, so for number 10, I'm gonna demonstrate the movement. You're gonna name it. We'll start here, anatomical position. So begin here, end here, like that. So begin here, end there. I'll face away from you just so you can get direction a little bit better. So start here, end there, like that. So we're looking at the movement occurring in this area here. That's where the movement's occurring. So for number 10, name that movement. And for these, for pretty much all of the next questions for the rest of the quiz, you're gonna to wanna to put rights and lefts in front of all of these. So you gotta say which way did the movement go? And then the follow-up questions, you're gonna need rights and lefts as well. All right, so we got that movement. Then for number 11, right? I want you to name four muscles that can perform this movement, all right? When you're naming these muscles, I want you to pick one muscle from each quadrant that goes around this area. So like this is one quadrant, this is one quadrant, this is one quadrant, and that is one quadrant. So you can pick one muscle from here, one from here, one from there, one from there, all right? And you wanna pick four muscles that when they work together will allow me to do that, all right? So again, you need rights and lefts in front of all of those things. Oh, 
All right, number uh, 12 is you're gonna name another movement. So for this one, I'm gonna actually face to the side like this. So we're gonna start in anatomical position, begin here and here like that. So from here to there, all right? And again, the movement's happening in this area here, right? So name that movement for number 12. All right, and then for number 13, I want you to name two muscles that when they work together can perform that movement that we showed for 12. Two muscles that when they work together perform that movement, and that'll be for 13. So figure 13A, 13B. And that's all of them. All right, so pause if you need more time. And then once you start it up, we'll go over all the answers. All right, so let's put this stuff back. So number one, I'm gonna come back in here, let's get everything back in place. All right, we'll kind of talk our way through these answers here. Uh, get everything resituated. back up like that cover up over there all right so number one was just to name this thing here and that's going to be your umbilicus if you put belly button fine um, but the proper name for it is the umbilicus that would be one number two was we opened up all this here all right so we're moving that abdominal wall the way then we grabbed the greater omentum and we reflected the greater omentum and I wanted to know what part of the intestines did we uncover right here and that would be transverse colon. Then number three, we left the greater omentum reflected, right? Then we're going to take the small intestines and we move them over to the right side of the body. So we take all the small intestines and we bring them over as much as we can. And notice at this point, I can't move the small intestines over anymore. And that's because we've exposed the root of the mesentery here. So we kind of got that anchor point. And we wanted to know, if we're looking at the root here, I wanted to know what is the name of the part of the intestines that emerges from under the root of the mesentery. And that would be right here. And that would be ascending duodenum. Because at this point, you can see if I kind of pull down here, you can see the duodenum is anchored right there that's the jejunal flexure and then past that point up here what i'm holding is the jejunum so we have the root of the mesentery ascending duodenum jejunal flexure jejunum of those things i had asked you about ascending duodenum then for number four there were two parts so we kind of put all this stuff back again brought the greater momentum down and we kind of moved the abdominal wall back over. And I said, okay, once we move the abdominal wall out of the way, what cavity are we entering into here? And that would be the peritoneal cavity. And that's everything that we can see here. So then if we reflect the greater momentum and we move the small intestines out of the way, and I said, what cavity are we pointing to here? What's behind what I'm pushing against the probe there? And that would be the retroperitoneal cavity or the retroperitoneal space. So that would be for 4A, 4B. 4A was peritoneal, 4B retroperitoneal. Uh, number five, we take the small intestines and we're gonna move them back over the other side. And here we get to where we have the junction between, we said this thing was ending. So this is the ilium. And this is where the ilium's meeting the cecum. And we took this and we flipped it over. And we wanted to know what this thing was hanging off the junction between the ilium and the cecum. And that's going to be the appendix there. Then number six was we moved the small intestines back up out of the way a little bit. Kind of got this up out of the way. And... We wanted to know down here, what am I pushing against right there? What am I pushing against there? And that's going to be the bladder. Number seven was we moved all this stuff back again. We went back on the outside, brought this up here, right? And we got this, and boy, this muscle is just falling apart here. Okay, we got this over here like that. 
right? So at this point, we kind of uncovered rectus abdominis. So we got rectus abdominis, we follow that all the way down. And then right here, we can see, move this out of the way. We want to identify this little muscle here that's sitting on top of rectus abdominis, and that is gonna be pyramidalis. That's what we have there. So number, that was number seven. Yeah, number seven, pyramid alice. Okay, then number eight, we had two parts. So we open this back up, go here, get this out of the way, get that out of the way. We reflected the greater omentum again. We move all the small intestines over to the right again, and then we exposed this part of the intestines that we could see here, right? So we had this part going down, it turns and comes over this way. So. 8A was this part of the intestines here, which is the sigmoid colon, and then 8B was this part of the intestines here, which is descending colon. So we have descending turning into sigmoid. I asked sigmoid first, then backed it up into descending colon. All right, then for number nine, we moved number eight out of the way. So we took 8A, which was sigmoid colon, moved that out of the way, right? Then we are uncovering a little bit deeper into the pelvis here, right? And we wanted to know for number nine, what was this thing that I'm holding up here? And that's gonna be the uterus, okay? And then following over towards me here, if we kind of open that up a little bit, that was 9A was the uterus, 9B right here was an ovary. And then what connects the uterus and the ovary here was either the uterine tube or the fallopian tube. Either name is acceptable. So 9A was uterus, 9B ovary, 9C was either uterine or fallopian tube. Number 10, then we moved on to the movements. So let's get my glove back off here. Let's re-show this. Okay, so to the movements. We had 10 was named this movement. Go from here to there, we said the movement occurs in this area. So what we're looking at is rotation of the lumbar spine. Now you gotta pick a direction. I'm turning to the right, so I kind of face this way and I kind of went like that so you can get your rights and your lefts. I don't care, you could have said we turn to the right, turn to the left, it does not matter. Just pick a direction, just make sure that everything else you put matches the direction that you put. I turn to the right, so we're gonna do the answers assuming I went to the right. So again, the movement is rotation of the lumbar spine to the right. Then for 11, we wanted four muscles. So we kind of got A, B, C, D here, right? Um, we wanted four muscles that when they work together cause me to rotate my lumbar spine to the right. And we said we could pick one muscle kind of from each quadrant here. So this required you to use muscles in the abdominal cavity, but also think back to some of the muscles uh, on the back in the spine, okay? So if we want to turn to the right, I need something over here that would be a same side rotator. So you could pick something like right internal oblique. Then over here, I need something that's an opposite side rotator. So you could pick left external oblique. Then on the back now, on the right hand side, I need a same side rotator. So you need say one of the erector spinae muscles like right longissimus, right iliocostalis. You could pick one of those. And then you're gonna pair that up with on the left hand side on the back, we need an opposite side rotator. So think one of the transversal spinalis muscles. So you could pick like left uh, semispinalis, left multipedis, left rotatories, any one of those. So there's a couple things to choose from there. You just had to pick one from each quadrant. The thing to pay attention to and think about here is, are you gonna pick a same side rotator or an opposite side rotator? And that's based upon the direction that I wanna go. I wanted to go to the right, so which means on the right side of my body, I need same side rotators. On the left side of my body, I need opposite side rotators. And then you could just pick any muscle that would fall into that category. So that was number 11. Then number 12 was show you another movement. So we went here from the side and we kind of started here and we ended here like this, right? So this is, again, we're saying the movements in this area. So I am flexing the lumbar spine here, doing that, right? So the movement was flexion of the lumbar spine. And then for 13, we wanted two muscles that'll perform that movement, right? So now we're going, okay, if we wanna do flexion of the lumbar spine, we're thinking abdominal muscles here. 
So when you're picking two, the thing to think about here is if we want flexion and we're gonna move in that sagittal plane, then we need bilateral contractions, okay? So when you're picking two muscles, you're gonna pick two of the same ones. So you could have said I used a right hand um, rectus abdominis and a left hand rectus abdominis, or I used a right hand external abdominal oblique and a left hand external abdominal oblique. You're gonna pair up the muscle, so it's a right muscle and a left of the same muscle. The key word here was it had to be bilateral. So it had to be two of the same things. You're saying I'm using a right one and a left one. That's, that's those are the two muscles you would pick. And you could have paired them up however you wanted, but you could have picked rectus abdominis, external abdominal oblique, or internal abdominal oblique, as long as you said I'm using a right hand one and a left hand one. And that's it.